when it comes to selling your home. At Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the markets. Let's go! Thanks, Joe, for the news. This is Paul Cooney from the heart of Glasgow. It's the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. 40 hours since the big game, and, well, the whole country is talking about it. And I see that Sky had their biggest crowd, 1.44 million. It's the biggest SPFL attendance since the SPFL was formed, what, 11 years ago. So that's good to see. People would have watched it and enjoyed it big time. John Hartson was on with me and Chris Burke on Sunday. Great to see you back, John. Yeah. And Craig Moore, you were at the match. What do you think about that game 3-3 three, three at the end? Paul, I'll tell you what I didn't love. Yeah. I didn't love the start yeah. for, for, for Rangers. Uh, I 21 mean, seconds. I, I'm just, just taking my seat. Um, and it was an incredible start to the match. Uh, a full house, mm. obviously no Celtic away supporters. And if you ever want to find a way to si- silence a home crowd, that early goal certainly did that. Had you just got uh, to your seat, genuinely? Oh, no, I yeah. got in a little bit early. Because right. uh, Barry said last night, he just sat yeah. down, game started and ba- boom. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was disbelief. But yeah. at the same time, you, you look at, um, you know, I, I guess lack of understanding uh, between Tavani and, and Butland. I think his position should have been higher. Maida does what Maida has always done, and that's harass and chase things down and, and, and got his slice of luck that he probably deserved from that particular action. So great start for Celtic, Paul. Um, they definitely played the conditions the first half a, a lot better. The wind, uh, Rangers still tried to play out from the back. Butland was caught nearly a couple of times uh, from the ball on his feet in terms of pressure. Um, Michael Beale team, and I don't like to be negative towards Michael Beale, but I, I think everyone would have to agree that a, a Michael Beale team and the players' conference where it was at, uh, this game would have been dead and buried. Uh, but Philip Clement and this Rangers team showed a resilience and a strength to, to not, not only come back once in this game, Paul, to get back to 2-2, to then concede straight away and then find another way back into to the game. A draw in the end, I think, um, felt like a win to a lot of Rangers supporters come the end of the match. Conor Goldson said beforehand, uh, this is a game we need to win. Rangers yep. didn't. I know at the end the manager said it's a moral victory. I'm not sure what the moral victory is. I think he meant, I would imagine, it felt like a victory because, you know, into injury time, what, five minutes into it, yeah. your goal behind. So it was a great finish for Rangers. What do you feel about the title now? What do you think it's going to be? Barry said 50-50 last night. Mark Guidi had it 51-49. Oh, he, to Celtic, yeah. He, so what, what do you think the balance is now? Well, look, I mean, it's it's in the hands still of, of, of both teams. Um, yeah, uh, can Rangers go to Celtic Park and, and, and get a result? Yeah, that's a big test. They haven't beat Celtic at all this season. Could Rangers potentially go the, the full season without be, beating Celtic and still win the title? I still think that could be on the cards as well. But I think Celtic and Rangers will both feel confident now, Paul, with the remaining games, a split. Um and I tell you what, it could it could go down to the wire. It could go down to goal difference. Uh, still some twists and turns, I believe, in the remaining games. John, we saw the headline this morning that your old club Celtic have going to the SFA asking for questions and answers. We've got questions about VAR, uh, the penalty, which they feel wasn't because the tackle they feel by Alistair Johnson uh, on Silva was fair. He got the ball, is what Celtic feel. John, you were on at the time. It was hard to call. What do you feel about this now? Well, I actually thought when I first saw it uh, live, I actually thought um, it's not a penalty. You know, and, and obviously looking at it again, um, I think Alistair Johnson gets a little nick of the ball. Um, I think Silva is desperate to go over. Um, I think there is slight contact on his knee, but I don't think that's enough um, for the referee to give it. John Beaton gives a yellow card for Silva. He should have also had a yellow card during the game for his play acting, which was absolutely ludicrous. Graham Soonis would have been choking on his biscuits, watching him punch in the floor. 
as if his knee had been popped out or something like that. Yeah. He gets up and walks away with just nothing at all to complain about. So that was really not nice to see. I think the Rangers fans would be disgusted in him. But for me, I don't think it was a penalty. Um, I'm not quite sure whether you get many answers from the FA now. The decision is done. You know, yeah, you put sure. in letters and you complain. There is nothing that the teams can do about it now other than make their voices known uh, to the powers to be above. But for me, Paul, I, I didn't think it was a penalty. I also thought it was a brilliant game, great advert yeah. for Scottish mm -hmm. football, six goals. Um, and I knew the last words I said when I left this show last Tuesday, I bet there's lots of controversy. Yeah, you did. Yep. And that's, <laughs> that's what we yeah. have got. Yeah, well, we, we we had it all, didn't yeah. we? We had the the I guess the early start for Celtic. Yeah. There, you know, there was VAR. There was penalties. Um, look, for me, um, I think the, the the decisions they got right. I think that the, the Goldsons was a definite penalty. I, I believe that the the silver incident. I actually think he gets booked because you're right, John. And whether it's your teammate or your opponent, I don't like seeing people uh, rolling about on the ground. If you if you're injured, you stay down. If not, get on with the game. And I think that's why probably John Beaton gave him a yellow card initially. Mm. Uh, but I think they got that decision right. Um, spectacle, great spectacle for, for Scottish football. You touched on the, the highest uh, yeah, viewership, uh, which is incredible. Now, this uh, might be our audience and Go Radio on Sunday. I'm not quite sure because Big John was on fire, so was Chris <laughs> Burke. Uh, 1.44 million, but that's good to see. Yeah. Well, the game's always going to sell, but yeah, no, yeah. Like, it's fantastic. Um, and look, out with, I mean, we, you know, yeah. Big John played at, uh, at Celtic, I played at Rangers, but even out with uh, ourselves, and you're hearing a lot of the conversation, even down south, people absolutely loved what they've seen. Yeah. yeah. News for Rangers fans, supporters are going to be advised that it's going to be an 11 o'clock inspection tomorrow because it moves on and it's Rangers due to play at Dundee tomorrow night. We all know the weather has been really. Heavy rain today, mm -hmm. same tomorrow. So Dens Park, pitch inspection, 11 o'clock tomorrow. They don't want to leave it till later in the day. Rangers obviously going up close to Dundee to prepare for the game. And Rangers say they'll ensure supporters are advised of the outcome as soon as possible. And don't worry, the media will as well. <laughs> We've been doing it for many, many years. Craig, it's not ideal, is it? We're going to hear from Philippe Clement speaking in a few moments yeah. um, about it. But look, I mean, the weather has been horrendous. It's been cancelled four times. We know four games have gone off at uh, Dens Park. Mm -hmm. We hope, pray that surely this game will go on tomorrow. I think it has to. When yeah. you look at the, the split, um, mm. I think the game has to be played this week. So they need to find a solution. Um, early notice for, for all involved in terms, in terms of both teams preparing for this match, but also for, for fans, it is really, really important. They've got to get a decision and they need to come to that quickly. Here's Philippe Clement speaking about the Dundee pitch. I don't know. It's a, it's a crazy situation to go in a top league that you don't know the day before and we're going to travel now. You don't know yet if the game is on tomorrow or not. So that's a really... Weird situation, okay, it can happen in extreme circumstances. <laughs> and I don't think last few years in all the top leagues it ever happened. But now when it's raining in Scotland, there's every time a problem. John C. Tony Doherty, manager of the month last month, the Dundee boss says, look, it's going to be on. Now, he's not in charge of the actual pitch, obviously, but we'd love this game to go on tomorrow. They are speculating if it didn't, it could be 24 hours later. But fingers crossed it goes ahead Wednesday night. Absolutely, because I think both teams want to get this yeah. game out of the way. As you say, it's been cancelled, what, four times, Paul? But if it absolutely pours, chucks it yeah. down tomorrow, it's going to be off again. Because you, you, you can't do nothing about, about the elements of what the, what the weather is going to be like. Yeah. So you're hoping that you get a lovely bright, sort of blistery, windy day to, 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 to obviously blow all the water off the pitch and blow it away and actually make the pitch playable because nobody can, you know, foresee what the weather's going to be like. If it's unplayable, if it's too much water on the pitch, Paul, and it's unplayable, then the game's going to be called off again. You know, uh, everyone wants to know early, but at the end of the day, you know, they've, got, they, they've yeah. got to try and make a decision. Yeah, sure. But it's impossible to make a decision by 11 o'clock because it pours down at 3 o'clock, then it's going to be unplayable. There's really nothing you can do about it. The pitch has got to be, it's got to be fit. It's got to be seen fit as a, as a pitch to be playable, isn't it? I'll tell you who'll be laughing. Mm -hmm. Who? 
See the likes of Kamarnik and Livingston have got the <laughs> pictures that we, we moan yeah, like. Of course. <laughs> there, would, there would never be an issue. But, Paul, see if the game does go ahead. Mm-hmm. It will be extremely difficult conditions, as we've touched on. Um, and, and what I will say is even on a, on a good pitch uh, at Ibrox, Rangers, in particularly the first half, did not play the conditions. The wind, they never dealt with. The, so, again, these are factors that, that sometimes you need to be able to handle um, because it might not be a great pitch, but you've still got to go and get the result. Good point. Yeah, for me, it, it's an old cliche, but it was, um, it was a game of two halves, wasn't it? I thought Celtic were outstanding in the first half, quite in the crowd, which they had to do because it's a cold run there. Believe me, if Rangers had took the lead... It would have been the noise would yeah. have been unbearable, really. Um, it would have been incredible. As it happens, the Rangers fans were quiet. They were shocked in that first forty-five minutes mm. going in two 0 down. But you have to say they were outstanding in the second half. Whatever Clermont mm. said to them at half-time, Paul, it worked because they turned it around. The 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 desire, you know, the passion, getting the first goal, uh, getting that first goal by Tavernier. And then uh, when, when Diomendi scored to make it 2-2 and then Ida goes up the pitch and you're thinking, that's it. That is it. Rangers cannot come back again. They come back from 2-0 and then obviously um, um, Matondo scores an absolute worldy goal. So as I said, it was a brilliant advert for Scottish football. I think the right, uh, right right scoreline uh, for me, 3-3, a draw, because it was a game of two halves. Celtic ran it in the first half. And Rangers run it in the second half. And we we'll touch on, sorry, Paul, and we we'll touch on, again, this game, right? So the huge importance, what was at stake, uh, and the small detail. Uh, and you look at, I guess, Celtic's third goal, um, either great movement on shoulder on, on shoulder of Suta, mm-hmm. I still think should be defended better. Mm-hmm. I really yep, do. And sure. also the fullback should come in. Mm-hmm. I don't think that should have ended up being an opportunity. Rangers concede straight away after going 2-2. Mm. At the same time, Celtic will be disappointed in the Matondo mm. equaliser because yeah. naturally he's trying to work to come in onto his Contract right foot. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Execution yep. was unbelievable, yep. but Yang's got to show him the line. I yep. totally agree with you, and I said it on, on, on the yes. weekend. That I, I yep. thought to myself, mm. oh, oh. it's very hard to criticise yeah. anybody in that situation because it's mm. such a brilliant goal, but from a defensive point of view, mm. you do not let a player come in on his favoured foot. Yeah. Cut inside and have the opportunity, the brilliance, the opportunity to bend in that far post. If you're cleverer there, Paul, and a little mm. bit wiser, mm. you just show him. You make it, you make it so obvious that you, with your body shape that he has to go down the line. You almost come inside like yeah. that into the into the box, and with your body shape, you show him down the line. So all he, all Matondo can do is then cross the ball with his left foot of course, yeah. and the, 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 the yeah. Celtic defenders by that time they can mm. get themselves set to deal with that yeah. cross but you do not let him come inside yeah. and give him that opportunity but albeit it was an incredible finish Craig four minutes to go were you thinking well, it's, it's not going to happen you're 2-1 down and then that moment from Seema what did you make of the goal? Ah, look uh, in the end it was a, again slice of luck yeah mm. uh, obviously with the with the deflection but because of the, the the way Rangers were in that in that second half, um, they were pushing. They were knocking on the door, Paul. So you know, was I shocked? No, I wasn't shocked. Uh, again, I was shocked when they couldn't hold on to a lead for. Uh, and he was any, absolutely any, any ecstatic. Any Paul, he was out of his seat. <laughs> he was absolutely ecstatic. I would, I would, I would think so. But yeah. again, but like, but then, yeah. but then Rangers clock off yeah. and, and, and sure. concede straight away, Paul. So I, I know Philip Clement has come out in terms of. The resilience, the character, getting knocked to the ground and finding twice uh, in the match to be able to bounce back. I think that you know Rangers will will take a lot out of that. Mm. Celtic will be disappointed, put themselves well, in a driving seat. I, I, I in think a position. both teams as well, Paul, are guilty mm. of switching off. Mm. You know, both teams will be guilty of both not, defenses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. For, for yeah. Me, not in both defenses, but the midfield as well. You look yeah. at mm. you know when uh, Silva ran right through for the yeah. DMND goal mm. in in the second half. And then obviously the Rangers defences, yeah. Craig, Craig said that, you know, we felt Suter should have blocked the shot from Ida right. to save sure. the goal. Yep. So for me, but, both teams were guilty of, of, of lapsing concentration and switching off at times. It was some game, wasn't it? 21 seconds, Maida scoring for Celtic. O'Reilly, a penalty after 34. Tavernier penalty in 55, makes it uh, 2-1. Sima in 86 minutes, 2-2. And then it looked as though that might be it. And then Ida 
87, 88 minutes, 3-2, and then eight minutes goes up. We knew there was going to be quite a bit, yeah, but yeah. eight minutes, Matondo, what a strike, 3-3. Three, three. Brendan Rodgers afterwards? Yeah, it could have been. I've been here before, and we've been good in games and, and scored more, and we had that opportunity again today to do that. The combination playing at times and the speed in the top line to get in behind was... We were very, very good, and... Uh, like I say, just, just that, maybe that link pass or that final ball to get in, just uh, maybe missing for him. Jack Buckingham made an incredible save uh, as well uh, off, of, uh, off of Matt's header. So, uh, so, yeah, so in terms of performance, I, uh, you know, I, can't, be, uh, I can't be critical because I think we, we showed lots of really good moments, real courage in the game. They get the lift from the penalty, which, and then you expect that, you know, you know partisan crowd back in the team. Uh, knowing that they're a direct team, they play up and play forward early. So we had to stand up to that and cope with that. And I thought the players did that really well. What are you thinking? Give us a call. 08 08 17 17 700. John Hartson is here. And so too is Craig Moore. Did I hear you yesterday morning on Talk Sport? They were on The Breakfast. I think I heard your voice, John. Because it's such a huge game that everyone wants to talk about it. But you're here tonight with us on the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Still speaking about it today. Rangers off to Dundee for the game tomorrow night. Philippe Clement was still asked about that first half on Sunday. So I was not happy about this first half. Although we could have scored also two goals, we had a good, uh, good clear chance on the header with Connor. We had a chance with with, uh, with uh, Fabio two times in the same action. So we could have scored also our goals, but our, our, our play was not not as good, and we gave away two other chances, not more. One time of Maeda and one time the header of O'Reilly, and the penalty is also extremely unlucky in that way. So you go in half time with yeah, a really bad situation. What did he say, Craig? Come on, tell us and go radio. What did he say what? at half time? I know what's said in the okay, I, just, I, I expected yeah. the, the penalties not yeah. extremely unlucky. Yeah. Everybody yeah. in the ground knows that Goldson led with his elbow yeah. and it's a penalty ninety nine times out of a hundred. So how anybody can come out and say unlucky with the penalty? But managers are going to see it from no, their point but of view. It's just yeah. like it's like. Yeah. Well, Craig, what try, do you think? Try, trying to get their message. You know what? Yeah. I, I was um, at halftime. I was like, there, "There's, there's got to be changes because I know he touches on the the, the two opportunities, Goldson header and, and um, yeah. Silver. Sorry, with a couple of chances, yeah. Hart makes. Mm. Oh, I think the second block is from uh, Carter Vickers, but that was all Rangers had. There was no momentum. There was no uh, pressure. Um, like I said, Celtic played the conditions really well yeah. and Rangers mm-hmm. were miles off it in the first half. And I expected Silva to come off and I expected mm-hmm. potentially Lawrence to come off. Um, eventually those substitutions happened a little bit later. Seema come on at the start of the second half for right. Yeah. And that made sense. Did, did he get it abs- wrong at the beginning? He probably did. Absolutely. I, yeah. I probably wouldn't have started with Scott Wright, mm. if, if I'm honest. Um, but again, honest enough, that just that level, uh, he, he, he for me doesn't, and is not able to make the impact that you need in that in that type of game. Um, but again, like I said, to to come back out to still make those decisions um, and and to get yourself back in the game, you've got to give uh, Clement and you've got to give the Rangers team credit because I've I've watched Rangers ever since I've been back here, right? And th- that the way that they've pulled themselves back off the ground and and got themselves back into this match. And let's not forget, by the way, Des has had. <laughs> Uh, an opportunity right at the yeah. end. Yeah. Um, yeah, he did, yeah. You know, so I, I, I think it was sure. a, a really good performance due to the setbacks mm. that, that were there. Celtic supporters will definitely go on away and say, that's a missed opportunity mm. because you put yourself in a winning position. You really want to be experienced enough to go and get the job done. For sure. Liam's on a Celtic fan saying that they know they can take Rangers now. They think they can. Yeah. Not to lose was huge. And Rangers fans, with a lot of good reason, thought they would win at home against Celtic. And the way they played in the second half, you can see why they would think that. It's in their hands. It's in Rangers' hands. It's in Celtic's hands. Here's Brendan Rodgers. Well, yeah, and that's all we needed to make sure we come out here today. Of course, we, we come in to win the game. That's what we, we want to do. But when I see how we play today and knowing that in a few weeks' time we're going to be even better, some of the guys getting more fitness and the guys that are coming back. Um, and, and for us, really, we, we have still a job to do in the other games, but we, we play Rangers at home. And, um, and with our own back and our own crowd and play to our level and our football, then... Um, 
yeah, we, um, we're, we're, we're pleased with today and, and hopefully then we can use that going forward. And John Liam wants to ask you, but will Celtic beat the other teams? The Kilmarnocks, for example. We keep saying Kilmarnock, yeah. don't we? Because they've been uh, so tough for Celtic. Oh, I, I still feel there's a lot of twists and turns, mate. I still? really do. Yeah. I really do. I don't think it's cut and dry that people are saying, you know, it, it, both teams are going to win every game. If You know, obviously you don't know if Rangers win at Celtic Park. Mm-hmm. If Celtic can play very similar, Brendan's saying there, we're going to be a lot better. You're hoping that they are. Obviously, Callum McGregor will be a lot more fitter. Hitachi, a few more games under his belt, whether he goes with Idar or Kyogo. Mm-hmm. Kyogo did very little at the weekend, but when Idar came on, he looked sharp, he looked strong. You know, he, he looked as if he could handle that situation. Um, but no, I, I, listen, it's been that type of season, hasn't it? Yeah. It's been twists right. and, and turns Unusual and ups season, hasn't and downs, yeah. you know. Yeah. Celtic have lost, Rangers have, you know, mm. the, won the League Cup. You know, Celtic were in front, then Rangers clawed their way back. Is that a dig? Is that yeah. a dig? He's saying it's an unusual season, Rangers have won the League Cup? No, not at I'm all. Kidding. Rangers I'm, have done ever so well. It's, yeah. it's like the same on Sunday. I thought they were fantastic yeah. coming back. I said that at the weekend. I thought the character, yeah. not easy to come back, whether you're home or away, Paul, when you're two goals behind... It's not easy to, to have that character within the... Look, we can get back in this, you know, and that's exactly what they did. Character is the word that Philippe Clement used this afternoon about his team. There's a, a big evolution because these are the same players that a few months ago could never do that. So they've taken a lot of good lessons and this needs to be in that way uh, a reference game for the rest of their career. A reference for the rest of their career... That's a big call, uh, but, but, <laughs> but certainly in regards to the lessons that, that I, I guess hopefully Rangers are, are able to learn from, then they need to put that into action for the remaining fixtures because there's going to be different types of matches uh, that are thrown against Rangers. But I guess a real test for me will still be a, a way to, to Celtic and making mm-hmm. sure that you, you, you start that game well and then are able to go and win a game of football. That's me learning. And, and showing that you're, you're able to uh, rectify those mistakes. Both teams will feel as if they've got an unbelievable chance of, yeah. of winning the title. I, I, I agree with John. I think that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there's maybe a draw from either team along the way to that match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so there's there's some, some biting the nails and all that sort of stuff for the supporters still to come, I think. Tuesday night's Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. You know the number. John Hudson, Craig Moore standing by. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Looking to sell property in Glasgow? Call Kayleigh and the team on 0141 374 0409. Let's go! It's the Go Radio Football Show, Paul Cooney, Craig Moore and John Hartson, veterans of uh, life. No, not life, <laughs> of, the, of the derby, the big derby. Uh, Neil McCann was telling us the other night, Greg, about some great barnies between you and John, great battles, you know, in the early 2000s. And he said, I remember big John coming up and bang, straight in the face to you. Mm-hmm. You just got back up, you played on, and then you got him 10, 15 minutes later. He got yeah. back up and played on. Good old days. Yeah. He should have got sent off for his challenge <laughs> on me. Mine was, <laughs> mine was aggressive. His was first. His was first. His was, a, his was a joke of a challenge. <laughs> Some game at the weekend. And listen, we still don't know who's going to be top six as well. No, Is it going no. to be Motherwell? What a result for them. Three mm-hmm. goals in, what, 11 minutes. What a comeback what a for the well, isn't it? Do you think it makes yep. a difference, Craig, in terms of you know how how the you know the the after the the split game, sorry, yeah. how their schedule will that make a difference in terms of both teams, like who plays home and who plays away? Because remember, these the Hearts have beaten Celtic yeah, sure. twice this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Kilmarnock have taken three results yeah. of Celtic, so. No, I, I don't think these games are cut and dry. I still think that Celtic need to be at it for every single game. No, nah, and for sure. And look, you're, you're right. So, I, look, we, we need to wait for the split to come out. Mm. But what I'm led to believe is Celtic will potentially get three home games due to the teams that will be in that mm-hmm. uh, split and, and, and Rangers potentially two home games. So every game now for both Rangers and Celtic, John, are, are a cup final. It is yeah. a cup final, yeah. you know, because the other, the other teams... Although they're still playing for for European, you know, qualifiers, which mean a lot for for next season to to the clubs, um, they're still playing for their lives. But there's so much more at stake for Rangers and Celtic. And of course, that could be a factor tomorrow night if the game goes ahead. Inspection tomorrow morning at Dundee. 
Dundee against Rangers. And remember, Motherwell, we mentioned, could get top six, which is phenomenal, given that a few months ago they couldn't buy a win. And Hibs, poor result for them at the weekend, oh. but they could still make it. So the next few days are going to be absolutely crucial. Matt, um, yeah. yeah, really. I mean, again, we, we, we tend to talk, obviously, about the, the, the pointy end, and in particular yeah. <laughs> uh, both Rangers and yeah. Celtic. But for, for Hibs, if they don't make the top six, Paul, and Aberdeen then yep. I'll tell you what, really, really poor seasons. Yeah, not happy there. A lot of people are asking what's happening tomorrow, the Rangers fans. Is the game going to go ahead? We just don't know. At the moment, it's on 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, here's Philippe Clement. He was asked, could there be a risk to players uh, if the pitch isn't ve in very good condition? I don't know because I, I haven't seen the pitch. I, I haven't been on the pitch. It was clear when the moment we were there last time, that it was dangerous for, for players, for both teams. Huh? And it was not playable. So I will see if it's another situation now. And at the end, I'm not the one who decides. It's, it's the referee who decides this. Would that be a factor? And look, Paul, again, I'm not sure what the, yeah. the, the concerns were with the pitch, whether it was actually waterlogged, so that means the ball's not moving. But there's things that you can actually do. Unfortunately, it's, it's resources and, and it's people on the ground yeah. because if yeah. it's water, you can get it off the mm -hmm. pitch. Right, if there's holes and all that sort of stuff, it can be filled with sand. Is that a dangerous pitch? As for me, it's not a dangerous pitch, and and, and John and I would have played on many yeah. like that back in the day. Mm. Um, They've got covers from Celtic, haven't they? And Burnley staff are helping as well. Here's a bit more from Philippe Clement about the game and how much he'd like it to go ahead. Of course, because I want to prepare a game. So if we cannot play tomorrow, when are we going to play then? Is it then on Thursday? So... If it's on Thursday, I would like to know that today, so we can train tomorrow. If the decision is made tomorrow evening, we have one afternoon, evening, all day in a hotel near to Dundee for nothing. Lost time. That's a really good point. Let's take a call. Laurie is on from Carntine. Good evening, Laurie. Hey, panel. Good evening. Hi, uh, Laurie. Hi, Laurie. Yeah, uh, good evening, John. Good evening, good evening Craig. Mate. Uh, Craig, can I speak to yourself for a moment, big fella? Sure. Uh, one thing that's always intrigued me, uh, you were one of the Socceroos uh, that I uh, played for your, your national team. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously there was some uh, distance involved when you played for Rangers about uh, being granted international leave. Craig, one thing that's always fascinated me, and perhaps you can enlighten me, uh, obviously there was huge distances involved to go to these games. Mm -hmm. 10,000, 11,000, 12,000 miles. Uh, what was the procedure when you left Rangers? Did you meet up with the Aussies training uh, camp in Australia or did you go direct to the away venues if there were any games in the, the Pacific? Uh, yeah, no, good question. So normally, uh, again, if, if, if the, the game, obviously once we went into to AFC, uh, the Asian Confederation, if the game, yep. if the game was, uh, you know, for example, against Japan or South Korea or uh, Thailand, then... Uh, yeah, I would I would go directly to those countries and meet up with the squad that were all actually meeting there anyway. Mm -hmm. So whether whether they were Australian based or not, if it was an away fixture uh, due to the window, then they would get them in as as early as they possibly could, and that would normally coincide with myself coming back from Europe to to meet up with the squad. Laurie, the travelling is difficult, but again, when you're um, when, it, when, it, when it's what you're used to and you've done it kind of all your days, you know, uh, we, we, we just got used to it. I mean, we used to play a game, international game on a Wednesday night, for example, back in Australia. Um, wouldn't fly out until Thursday, get into the UK Friday morning, and all you could do was basically a loosener because you're recovering and, and play Saturday. That, 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 that would never happen today. How did you cope with the jet lag? You know what? I've travelled for a long, long time, okay. Paul, and... and there's a lot of things for it. I still think the best thing is when you're tired, sleep. Mm -hmm. John? Laurie, I know you haven't come on just to ask Craig about his travelling exploits. And my, <laughs> quest my, my <laughs> question to you is... That was my supplementary question, uh, John. That was a teaser. What, that was a more what, teaser. What are your thoughts now after watching the game on Sunday? Well, <laughs> big man, I, I'll tell you uh, what I think. Uh, I spoke to you on Sunday, of course. The dust has settled. Uh, there has been uh, 40 hours a pause for sober reflection. I, and uh, I think, John, if I'm being truthful with you, pretty much 
I I was hoping we'd get a draw at the very least. Uh, I was quietly optimistic we might have won the game, but we got the point. But I've got to be honest with you, uh, John. I I was hugely disappointed uh, that we let the game slip f- from us. Mm. I thought we let Rangers off the hook. Uh, there were a couple of goals. The, the goal that uh, Maeda scored, I think, was was freakish. I think the goal that uh, Seema scored was also free, uh, freakish because that was aided by a uh, courtesy of a deflection. Uh, what it's taught me, a couple of things I must say, and I need to be honest yeah. and, and even handed to you. Uh, Philip Clement, any time I've come on this programme, I have uh, commented how he has made a huge difference for Rangers' fortunes this season. John, it's good to be remembered that when uh, Philip Clement inherited Rangers, uh, he inherited a side of underachievers and underperformers who, for whatever reason, mm. uh, you know, Philip, uh, Michael B. or rather couldn't get a tune out of them. So yeah. I think we have to be cognizant of the fact that Philip Clement is a, a fantastic uh, coach, a manager, and he's deserving of respect. Mm. We are also very fortunate that we have got a great Gaffer uh, and Brendan Rodgers. But overall, John, yeah. to be honest with you, I think it was an opportunity lost. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And if you listen to the show on Sunday, I just felt that having gone in so dominant at 2-0 at half-time, then, listen, I know I know, Rangers came out flying in the second half. Had to play better because they couldn't get any worse than, than the first half. Um, and, and for me, I think Rangers expected... To win the game, I think the fans did. I think Clermont did. A lot of pundits did. A lot of the media did. Rangers have been on such a really, really good run under Clermont. So in the end, I thought Rangers were ecstatic with the point, considering yep. the balance, how the game. You know, when you go mm. two 0 down and then three two, three two down, such so late in the game as well. That was my thoughts. I thought they were absolutely delighted with the point on the balance in which the game went. Um, but for me, I also think Celtic will take a lot of confidence from going to Ibrox and playing the way they did it, particularly in the first half. Mm. Craig, do you think that uh, Brendan Rodgers deserves praise for the way he has revived Celtic? I mean, they were off the boil a couple of months ago and the way uh, they've played against Rangers, two wins and one draw. Yeah, now look, I mean, Brendan Rodgers uh, is a fantastic manager. Um, for me, it's looked this season that he's had his own personal battles with the club, mm. um, you know, and, and and therefore there was a period where probably Celtic, you're looking and they're going, they're, they're not, not at their best and their supporters will, will, I'm sure, agree with me on that one. But again, it's it's a, the business part of the season. Yep. Um, I thought they were excellent against Livingston um, recently, uh, leading mm. into to, to obviously this old firm match. They got off to a fantastic start. Laurie, I agree with you. Mm. I think that, you know... Celtic will feel disappointed that they couldn't then go and get the job done. The flip side of that is obviously the, the Rangers side, and you've got to give yeah. Rangers huge credit to, to find their way back into this match. Even before, I, I, I was of the opinion that, again, that I would love to have seen Rangers win for obvious reasons, but I, I, you can't go into it, and I didn't go into this game with any confidence whatsoever. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, no, no. You, you, no, you no. think you're thinking that well, again, seeing okay. them being involved yeah. in them, that anything can happen in this particular match. In the end, the draw probably felt like a win to a lot of supporters. I, I've no doubt about that. Laurie, were you asking about the travel? Were you thinking of the players, the Japanese players, the South Korean players? Hey. No, no, in actual fact, I've just been told I wasn't. Uh, it's just that Craig was in the programme tonight. Okay. Uh, Paul, can I make a couple of points before I sign off, which are important to me? Go on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, number one, uh, John, yeah. you have always, of course, been an inspirational figure to me where my health is concerned. Thank you. So I'd just like you to know, big man, uh, that uh, I went for my annual checkup several weeks ago and there were no uh, issues, problems or complications. Listen, my, my uh, presenter here and Craig... They're giving it the fist pumps, yep. Laurie. And so am I. We're all absolutely delighted with that good news. Fantastic, mate. Well, I wanted to make you all aware of that, and and especially yourself, John, uh, because you are so inspirational to uh, inspirational towards me. Now, uh, the other point I want to make, Paul, uh, before yep. I sign off is, you know, uh, this situation at Dens Park with Dundee, yep. you know, there'll be a lot of Celtic supporters, no doubt, laughing up their sleeves about that. However, I'm not one of them, and I'll tell you why. Because that just as easily could have been Celtic. Yeah. 
uh, who are waiting on a stay of limbo to get the all clear to, uh, for this game tomorrow. Uh, you know, I heard Tony Doherty a few weeks ago, uh, and I'm not blaming Tony, it's not his problem, but he said that, you, you know, there was a deluge of rain which was unexpected, etc. That may be so. However, here's the point. The point of the matter is, 800 yards along the road, you've got Tannadise. Now, irrespective of inclement weather, Paul, or atmospheric conditions, Dundee United haven't been affected by that. So it's nothing to do with random weather or freak weather conditions. It's something to do uh, with the fact that their uh, pitch is not fit for purpose. So I think that they should get it uh, sorted. Uh, Otherwise, I think punitive measures have to be taken against Dundee. The panel's thoughts. Yep, thank you, Laurie. I think we agree that, um, look, Scottish weather can be horrendous. We love the proper, the real pitches rather than the plastic pitches. But yeah, there is an issue there, for sure. Remember, Laurie, a few years ago now, maybe a good few years ago, I can't remember how many okay. how long ago yep. it was, but Motherwell had a really um, big issue with their pitch, mm. didn't they? And I, think I remember that, it well, John. Yeah, yep. and there was games called off there every winter. Yep, but they spent a lot of money on it. They spent yeah. an awful lot of money. I, I don't know how they've done sure. it, but they, yeah. they obviously got mm. the money from somewhere and they prioritised they prioritised they prioritized, um, the pitch lorry yep. and that's got to be done. Now, yep. At this level... You know, the Scottish Premiership, your pitch should be able to hold out for, you know, for the, the 38 games. And I, I agree with you. I, I, I'm not behind you in terms of there should be sanctions and fines and this sort of stuff because you're finding a club, you know, yeah. that, that, that are doing really well this season under Tony Doherty. It's just sometimes, I know what you're saying about Dundee United, but um, I agree with you in, so, in so many ways, but don't agree in, 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 so, in obviously um, fine, finding the yeah. football club. Yeah. Craig, final word on it. Yeah, unfortu- yeah, Unfortunately for Dundee, it is something they're going to have to address in the off-season, yeah. which is money, um, to improve that pitch. You touched on Motherwell, they had to spend a lot of money, so that will have to happen. In regards to this particular match, I want it to go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I, I think just go on for Rangers, go and get the game won, and I tell you what, it doesn't matter what type of pitch, just go and get the right result, and I think that would actually give confidence to Rangers. Laurie, it's great news that you are doing so well. Thanks for the call. Cheers, Laurie. Cheers, Laurie. Cheers, Laurie. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, cheers. Yep. Philippe Clement was asked, what if the game is delayed? Uh, there are talks with uh, the two clubs and, uh, and the federation about that. So when is the, the right time to play? But if you want to play in Dundee next week, what's going to happen when it rains next week? Strange, strange for me. So because every time it rains, there's a problem. So those are things for uh, for the federation. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get your home ready for the markets with help from their team of experts. Let's go. This time tomorrow night is going to be Peter Grant. And Barry Ferguson, who'll be with us Thursday night. Stephen McGinn with Andy Walker. And then Barry back along with Mark Guidi on Friday night. By then, we'll know if Dundee, surely Dundee and Ray... Well, we don't know, so let's move on, Craig. We all want this game to go ahead tomorrow. Um, Celtic fans have been calling in about what's about the, the weekend. Some of them not happy with the decisions, but overall, it was a phenomenal game. The earliest goal you've seen in a long, long time, 21 seconds. It was a symbol of our intent right from the off. You know, we got a, we got a goal from our pressing and, and Dijan is there, giving the, the full-back no time and he presses it and obviously it's... Uh, it goes in, but but you'll always take that. So um, so yeah, so you get one nil up in the game, and of course then uh, that can always give you confidence away from home. Three three at the end, and uh, Brendan Rodgers said, "Look, it's still in their hands." We heard him say that earlier on. He was asked about the decisions. Uh, what about VAR? Uh, uh, yeah, I think they're all 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 correct. I think the obviously the the arm is up for for our penalty, so it's it's out of that body line or whatever words they use. <laughs> I'm not sure. So, so it looked a penalty and great composure by Matt on the on the finish. Um, their just leg goal was was a foul. I think we could see that, and uh, and and John seen that afterwards. So, uh, so yeah. So I thought overall, my only, as I said, in a in a game of this magnitude, it's uh, it's always a difficult game to referee. And, and for me, it was only the the penalty, which obviously swings it a little bit for them in the second half, but. Apart from that, I focus on my team and the players and uh, how much they gave to the game, which was fantastic. And on the 100 minutes or so? It was a fantastic, fantastic game, obviously full of lots of events within it. I'm so proud of the players today because we were so much the better team 
leading through to the penalty, you know, our composure on the ball, our pressing, everything. We should restrict at Rangers to virtually nothing, but we looked a real threat in the first half, 2-0 up, and could have had one or two more goals, I felt, with maybe picking the right pass. The penalty changes the momentum of the game, slightly for us in the second half. Um, mm. So it was a good decision on the pitch. And I think when you watch it back on the on the replays, it's really good recovery defending by Ali Johnson. He's going one way, and you can see he gets, he gets a nick on the ball, plays it away, and obviously... Uh, the, the player then obviously has gone down and, and and obviously looking to simulate the penalty. So I thought that sort of gave them a little lift in the game, having us been much the better team. Then we're unlucky with the deflection. Obviously it's a deflected goal. We give the ball away, but still it's a deflected goal. goes in for two each. And then you're looking at your team's response then. And being here with no support to, to, to help you or, or push you on, the players got themselves back in front again. Absolutely brilliant. Great finish by Big Adam. And uh, it looked like we could then go on and win it. And um, obviously, young guy Matondo scores a, a very, very good goal. But for us to come here to play with that courage and a mentality, and then the heart and the fight uh, to, uh, to to get a result to come away, and then it's it's still very much in our hands. So um, I'm very, very pleased with that. It was quite an afternoon, Craig. What are you thinking? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I understand Brendan's messaging uh, in terms of the events that, that happened within the match. Uh, I, I totally disagree. I think it was a penalty. Uh, and again, if you want to nitpick, Paul, yeah. um, the, the disallowed goal from Rangers, mm -hmm. there's no doubt it was a, a free kick. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, and if Silva breaks forward, plays it forward, uh, outside, I think it was Seema, and he scores, disallowed, VAR, no problem. But... First phase, second phase, third phase. For me, that's re-refereeing the game. But again, that's, that's, yep. my, that's, yep. that's my opinion. So I understand there's a Celtic side, and that was very much about uh, Brendan's messaging. Um, I think a draw, I think a draw was a fair result from the way it played out. I think Celtic were by far the best team in the first half, um, and Rangers were by far the best team in the second half. Um, I'm not buying into any yeah, decisions that influence this game at all. Yeah, Rangers fans think what they think on that one, on the penalty. By and large, and Celtic fans will see it as it, it shouldn't have been. And, and I get that. John Beaton did miss on that, the, the goal that was disallowed. Yeah. Dezos thought he had his moment as well, goal number 18. Yeah. But even, um, but sorry, was, sorry, Paul, yeah. and even the, so the flip side of that, you know, yeah. Philip Clement, and again, because yeah. you, you, you can't, you can't pull the wool over people's eyes. So no. even, even Philip Clement saying that uh, Goldson was unlucky with the penalty. He's not unlucky with the penalty. It's a stonewall penalty. So you've got to be fair. Um, I just think that Brendan's messaging there was a little bit more, um, again, just to make sure that it was yeah. still positive and upbeat for his team and the supporters coming away from that match. Part of the job, isn't it, for the managers as well. John, let's hear uh, Philippe Clement about the second half. To switch your, your mind and, uh, and to restart again. And that's what I talked about in halftime also. What I was disappointed about and how we had to do it better. What my guys did and what the players did. And in the second half, we played a really good game. And we were boss, and we were the best team. And we were creating the chances. And then you have this scenario that you come back 2-2, two -two, and directly you get the 2-3. What's another knock? But we react again. We never give up. Then score like that, and you see your team all second half pushing that hard and creating good opportunities against the good team, where I have a lot of respect for then after the game, you need to be satisfied. John, what do you make of Philip Clement? I totally agree with him. Yep. I, I, I thought he's admitting there that Celtic were the better team in the first half. He talks about Rangers missing chances. Um, don't forget, Butland made an, an outstanding save against Matt O'Reilly, mm -hmm. um, where Celtic possibly um, maybe could have gone three up, gone in 3 nil at half time. There was other opportunities in the first half as well for Celtic. They were very, very dominant. And um, Philippe Clement there uses the words, we had to start again. And they had to start again. They had to almost forget that first half because they were disappointed, to say the least. And then they come out, they, the, 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 they, they turn the switch back on and they were very, very good in the second half. I thought they, 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 they pressed Celtic. They were better on the ball. Um, they got more balls into the box. Yeah. They played it long at times. Um, Dessa's played really well. I thought Lawrence was good at times. And, you know, they deserved, they deserved to come back in the game. It's a contested, um, 
It's a contested sort of uh, opinions from people with regards to the penalty. I think what Brendan... It'll always be that way, won't it? It'll always yeah. be that way. Well, what Brendan, I think, yeah. tried to say there was that Alistair Johnson got some of the ball. You know, yeah. he got back and he recovered really well and he got a nick of the ball. And, and Celtic, sorry, want to know from the SFA if that was shown yeah. to was the shown. referee. Because sometimes yeah, to ball, be if yeah. a lot of people yeah. would think if, if you get the ball, then, you know, it's almost difficult then to, to, to give a penalty against you if you get the ball. Mm -hmm. Um, and he did get a little nick of the ball and then Silva goes over and it's really interesting that Beaton is right on top of it John Beaton's right on top of that challenge initially and then obviously he is told to go and have a look at it yeah. and he changes his mind he has a different perception of the whole thing that he saw then he watches it on television and then he feels it's a penalty and obviously he gives it but I can see what Brendan's trying to say oh, yeah. without going overboard because he knows he can't <laughs> go overboard anymore. Yeah, Do you know course. what I mean? He has, to, he has to choose his words very, very careful. And does anyone really know the laws anymore? The latest um, implementation of the laws from IFAB? I'm not sure anyone does. I've, I've looked at loads of them here. People have been on. Ian has helpfully sent me stuff. Big Rangers fan saying the decision will depend on the exact nature of the challenge. It must be emphasised that playing the ball first does not necessarily no, mean right. that a challenge is legal. Yep. So... Listen, yep. it's now done. You no, could go it's, on. It's, and I don't, like yeah, I yeah. said, I don't think, Paul, I don't think mm. that, that, like I said, the decisions at the weekend, mm -hmm. I, I think majority of people go, you know what, happy yeah. enough with those decisions. I, I don't think it was a game that people go, oh, but because of that, the, no. the, it wasn't like that. By the way, there were some absolutely <laughs> terrible decisions down south this weekend with VAR as well. Wasn't there? Ridiculous, absolutely. ridiculous Crazy. ones. Yeah. So what, uh, what people then would suggest mm -hmm. is that, Brendan Rodgers doesn't know the rules. No, I, th look, I think well, it is. Yeah, because no, you've said no. he doesn't think it's a penalty because Alison Johnson's got a nick on the ball. And other people then are suggesting, well, if you do get a nick on the ball, it doesn't mean to say you can't concede a penalty. Yeah. But that's, no, that, 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 that is that, right. That that's is right. in the rule book. Yeah, that, that, that is right. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. what we're saying is then, um, Brendan needs to read the rules. That's like, you that's know, like he, he's saying that off the top of his head. He says he sees Alistair Johnson get a nick on the ball. Yeah, yeah. And for that reason, he doesn't feel it should have been. That's exactly how the Celtic fans are seeing it. But obviously, the rule book suggests that. It, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. mean that yeah, uh, contact on the ball and then contact after that on the player, however hard or not, is, it, it doesn't matter at times. Darren's on, Craig, saying, What's the injury news from Rangers? Here's the manager. Uh, Ritwan is still missing, yes. Uh, he's not fit for, for this game. But it's, it's, it's a matter of, of days. So, not weeks. It's going to not be many weeks. But is it now in a few days or after the weekend? We will see. For the rest, no special things after our last game. Otherwise, nothing special. So, Ridvan Yilmaz misses tomorrow night, but could play at the weekend, maybe. By, by, by the way, but you've got Dujon Sterling, yeah. who was enormous. <laughs> yeah. Enormous at the weekend. There was one moment in the game, Paul, that Ida gets away from Goldson, um, plays the ball in, and uh, Sterling's recovery takes a knock from it. I'm telling you, I believe that Yilmaz and Barisic would have been caught out, and that would have been a goal for Celtic. Good point. What about Kieran Dell? He came on. I'll ask you about him. We don't see him too often. He's been speaking to the media today, ahead of the game tomorrow. How are they all feeling after such a, well, a massive weekend? Um, positive, yeah. Yeah, um, obviously going into half time 2 0 down wasn't ideal, but um, as you, uh, just said earlier that it's the first time in God knows how long that we've come back from 2 0 down to um, get a point out of the game. So, lots of positive to take, but a lot of stuff to learn as well. Chance to go top tomorrow night? I guess, like, we, like I said earlier, we, we're just focusing on winning every game we can at the minute. So, um, I think it's, it's probably going to have to be close to that to, to win the league. So, um, whether we go top or not, it's it's like the cliche, but it's game by game at the minute. And he was asked, "What's he learned from the weekend and that tumultuous game?" Um, you just got. A, I guess it was a bit of a free goal to start with, but just to know that you're always in the game, whether you're two 0 down or whatever it is, um, just keep believing, which we showed after half time and got the points in the end. How good was it to be back involved again? Class, yeah, yeah, um, great game to come back into. Um, yeah. Sounds like Raman in there. Yeah, it's a crazy goal if you're not ready. If Tavenier's not ready, then, uh, you know, give some credit to Maida. And sure, the way, but his speed, John, is yeah. just phenomenal. I mean, uh, how much is he worth? And what would he be worth if he could just be more consistent in scoring? But he's, uh, yeah, he just, he, he's gives a the, he gives the team, Paul, he, 
you know, he, he's not renowned for his, his goal scoring, but he gets his fair share. Mm -hmm. You can't deny him that. Mm -hmm. You know, we keep going on a bit his energy, but he's also clever as well. He, yeah. he can show the defenders down the line. He can show them inside onto the oncoming midfield player. Um, he gets up and down the pitch, doesn't he? he he's really good. He, I thought he'd give uh, Tavernier a horrendous afternoon in the first half. Honestly, Tavernier didn't know what day it was. Mm -hmm. With the goal, right? Tavani is trying to hook it away, but I, I almost think if he's a bit calm and he rolls it back to um, the goalkeeper. But obviously, Maeda's made up so much sort of... Um, ground. Ground, sorry. He makes up yeah. so much ground. Tavani probably is shot at the fact that he's, he's there. He's on his <laughs> yeah, shoulder. Yep. And the one thing probably Tavani doesn't do, what he normally does, is look over his shoulder because he hasn't mm -hmm. got the time. So he tries to hook it. And then Maeda's yeah. there, comes off his leg. Yeah, there's a little bit of luck to it. Yeah. But also what Brendan said there, our tactics with the press mm -hmm. really, really high. You know, Kuhn and Maeda did that in the first half. And, and not only that time, yeah. I thought the Rangers mm -hmm. back line, Craig, yeah. they made mm -hmm. a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Even Buttonland wasn't great with the ball at his feet, was no, he, in the again, first half? Again, because the, the, the windy conditions yeah. and it was yeah. holding up and, 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 and Celtic were pressing very, very high. Uh, and, and as you said, John, at that stage, right on top of things. Um, Maeda has an unbelievable chance, which he actually should do better. Yeah, uh, and potentially that's 3 0 game dead. For sure. Buried. Yep. Um, and, and again, he has great qualities. Yeah, but does. there he's got to start it outside the post. Yep. Uh, and he's a, he's a little bit too straight, which was a comfortable save for, for Butland in the end. The Butland save off uh, Matt O'Reilly oh. was, in, was incredible. I want to ask you about how what? good that was oh. and what did Gareth Southgate think? That's after the news because there's some big games tonight as well, not least Ayr against Morton and Wraith Rovers, second top against Airdrie. And what about the Champions League? The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go! When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. Yeah, if you're off to the games tonight, enjoy them. And the weather has been rough, but Air United against Morton is on. Good game down at Somerset Park. Both of them really looking for points. And second top of the table, Wraith Rovers up against Airdrie. So that's Barry's take for coming up, Craig, right at the start of the season. I think you think it might be done to United. So yeah. United out on top, a huge win for them at the weekend against Queen's Park. That's quite a game tonight, isn't it? It starts Park, the Rovers against Airdrie. Yeah, no, massive. Like I said, Wraith have been very good. Um... Still chasing a little bit, but mm -hmm. to keep that pressure on Dundee United, everybody expected Dundee United to, to cruise that league. That hasn't been the case, and Ian Murray's done a, a really good job at Race Rovers, and a win tonight will just keep that pressure and keep that, that, that title chance mm -hmm. for either side bubbling away. John, that was a huge win at Hampton for Dundee United, and to score all those goals yeah. was 5-0, uh, Louis Moult on top form. So that, that was a message, wasn't it? They're not going to give up. No, certainly not. You know, it's away from home against Queen's Park. They they won emphatically 5-0. Mm. But I've got to say, Wraith Rovers are on their tail, mm -hmm. Paul. Yeah. And it's a case of Dundee United have to keep winning because, you know, it'd be interesting to see how many people would love to see Wraith Rovers in the Scottish Premiership. I know Dundee, mm -hmm. big club, mm -hmm. been there Dundee before, United, yeah. been up and down in the yeah. last few seasons, a couple of different managers. Good pitch. Jim Goodwin <laughs> being there now, pitch is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, Wraith Rovers, I think a lot of people outside of maybe Dundee United yeah. might love to see a bit of an underdog mm -hmm. coming up. You did, know? did you, did you, in your day, play, top flight, you played against Wraith Rovers in the top flight? No, I wouldn't have done that. No. Yeah, that did. was just before that time. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. And they played against Bayern, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, go, on, um, go, on, go on back some way, yeah. but you're right, what a story it would be because everyone just expects Dundee United. Dundee United. Listen, whoever, yeah. whoever puts sure. the run together will, will be the yeah. team. I'm not siding yeah. with Wraith, but what a story no, no. it would yeah, be. Indeed. Air against Morton tonight, so Scott Brown, former Celtic captain, up against to Emery's Morton, both looking for points. And John, your old club, the Arsenal up against Bayern Munich tonight. That's going to be some game, isn't it? It is, yeah. Bayern Munich are, you know, Bayern yeah. Leverkusen are absolutely romping the Bundesliga, the 16 mm. points ahead 
of Bayern in second, but you know, still Harry Kane. Fact, Harry Kane going, back in going North back London. In the Emirates, yeah, yeah experts what can, yeah. as well. What kind of reception will he get tonight? Uh, ah, yeah. well, he might not. Might get a bit of a frosty <laughs> yeah. one, Paul. I would yeah. imagine. <laughs> but you look at Arsenal; they're, they're unbelievable at the minute, scoring goals from everywhere. You know, defensively, um, they're strong. Are they going to win it, John? Do you think? I mean, the title could do. Oh, right. I think uh, again, yeah. Liverpool drawn yeah. at the weekend against yeah. Man United. Mm-hmm. I think City and Arsenal would have been looking at that, thinking maybe left the door a little bit at jar. Do you know, um, uh, um, sort of yeah. um, Liverpool. It's so many chances, so, didn't they? First yeah, half. they yeah. did. But um, I think it's still between the three clubs. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can't call it. I, I think you just throw three balls up in the air, and which one comes down, you, you catch it, and then you just go that club. Yeah. I, I'm genuine. <laughs> the, the whole three yeah. clubs, got a fantastic yeah. teams, yeah. and it wouldn't surprise me, Paul, whoever won the league out of them three great teams. Who's going to win it? Um, look, I've said City. I, I, will, I will stick with City um, yeah. Yeah. against uh, Villa. Was it Villa? Uh, or the, the four-two match? Um, Palace. Palace. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Uh, De Bruyne again oh my god Haaland back in the goals uh, it's like but again Liverpool Arsenal um, Arsenal have improved out of sight defensively mm. uh, and, and you touch on the goals that they've scored uh, John as, as well but you know you know, and it, like old school kind of defender now you've seen this, the, the defenders celebrate when they make a tackle that clean sheet starting to mean something to them yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's been a huge improvement for Arsenal but it could go mm. any sure. Any yeah. any way between those three teams and Real Madrid against Man City tonight? Another, I mean Jude Bellingham up against Erling Haaland and Co. It's it's the best tournament in the world. Would you agree, Craig? Is is Haaland getting the game? Has Roy Keane not got him in League Two? <laughs> that was. I mean Roy Keane is uh, that uh, means box office, isn't he? No, but, yeah, yeah ab- of course, ab- absolutely. Yeah. No, that, that should be an absolute uh, Who, fantastic match as well. Who's that, in the Champions League next season from Scotland? Who's in the Champions I'm, League? I'm, I'm asking. Both. I'm going to go yeah. Rangers. Still going Rangers. Yes. Yep. Uh, going to yes. win every game now? Do you think um, Celtic now in the charge? No, just, yeah. no, no. I think that I, I still think that there's uh, th- there's some drop points. Where? And I mean, I, we don't know the fixtures yet. But so, yeah, right, uh, so Rangers uh, will have two games at home, three away. Yes. Yeah. John, who's going to win the title? Good. Celtic. I, I made Rangers favourites a couple of weeks ago yeah. with their run, and yeah. Celtic were dropping points and losing at home one or two games. Um, but now I just feel Celtic have almost turned the screw a little bit. Their performance at Ibrox was brilliant, certainly the, the first 45 minutes. So I think Celtic, Paul, you can't, you can't, um, you can't uh, overemphasize um, how important winning the league will be oh, to both sides. Straight in the Champions League, almost like a 40 million war chest. Going 40 million. The, the both clubs yeah. would love that. You know, it's an investment in the team. You know everything else that 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 money brings. Mm-hmm. If you like those three game home game packages, you know that you can sell to the supporters mm-hmm. three full houses and great atmospheres, great you know great teams, good away mm-hmm. good away uh, teams as well. Yep. And I was lucky to play in the Champions League. Craig would have done the same. It's the highest, it's the highest level of football, Paul. It's yep. the best competition in the world. Even to be in it, you know, to be standing mm-hmm. in that in in line, and then. You get that the Champions music. League yeah. anthem, the yeah. music. You know, it, it's brilliant to just be a part of that. Yeah, and and it, unfortunately, so far, um, and it doesn't matter um, whether it's Rangers or Celtic, the Champions League is beyond the two of them. Uh, they can compete, but they can't mm. seem to to find a way to get out. But at the same time, bang on, you, you know, you set yourself for the very, very highest, and that's a Champions League. And people to say, be involved well, in that. The teams are Amazing. better off in the Europa no League. Chance. They're more. Listen, you're going to turn that money down. No chance. You're better. Yeah. Be, you're better mm. being in sure. it than yeah. not being in it. John, if your old team, they had 67 million in the bank a couple of months ago when the results came out. If they get 40 million, I know it's not as simple as this, but yeah. you could say it's around 100 million. Yeah. They will spend they, in the they summer. They might give yeah. Brendan 5 million to spend. Yeah, I'm going to say, because <laughs> they didn't give him too much yeah. to spend in the, the last couple of no. windows, or last week. And window. he came in late, didn't he? You know, he came in when. It was still a big surprise, though, Paul. Yeah. It was okay. still a big surprise yeah. that he's not spent money. Uh, no, I agree. For sure. Celtic, for it's sure. Huge. And if Rangers get back in, 40 million pounds would be massive for your old club. And Rangers fans feel that this could... I mean, who would have thought four months ago Rangers could be going for a treble? Celtic fans could be going for the double. The double. Yeah, they yeah. Could, no, they that, could get one, they could be zero. I know. I know. There's still so, 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 so yep. much at stake and yep. so much to play for between now and the end of the season. Did he really crunch you off the ball? 
Neil McCann said the other night. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, of yeah. course. Of course. You know, yeah. but he's, you know, a typical, he's a typical yeah. tough yeah. Aussie. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he was the same. He was the same. He, he never, yeah. he never, he never Complained. flinched. Yeah. Honest to God. And, and he you could, did the and same. And he looked he up at a, me. Yeah. And he, he said, was exactly yeah. the same. And you know, and again, listen, we, we obviously played yeah. either side, right? Yeah. But played with his heart on his sleeve. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I felt as if I was the same way. Uh, he, sure. was, he was a yeah. great goal scorer. He was a, he was a competitor. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, in these games of football, the way that we used to play, you take a kick, right? You keep your mouth shut, mm-hmm. right? Because at some stage, you're probably going to kick someone else. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you just kept your mouth shut. It was Absolutely. old school, great jewels. Yes. You know what as well, Paul, right? I'm obviously yeah. going to pay Craig a, a big compliment there like he's just paid yeah. for me. I'm not patronising. I don't like, you know, no, don't sure. patronise. Yeah. But whenever I'm asked, seriously, this is whenever I'm asked, who was the best? Who was the toughest? Yeah. You know, centre back in Scotland that he played with you. And my answer is always Craig. Is it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Because he saw the ball. He was aggressive. You know, um, and he liked the battle of it. He enjoyed the, the physical side of the game. He liked hurting people. That's what he liked to do. <laughs> I just couldn't. But, I just um, couldn't hurt the big yeah. fella. <laughs> but, yeah, but he was. He was a top player. Obviously, played in the Premier League and won things and everything else. Yeah. yeah. On Good the times. line now, somebody you clattered. Henrik Larson is <laughs> no. Good times. What a player he was, wasn't he? Well. I know, I know. Yeah, what a player. Regan is on the line. Hi, Regan. Hi, Paul. I'm, just, I'm sorry that uh, uh, that is no uh, um, <laughs> Mister Mister uh, uh, Number Seven. There's no, yeah. there's no on the line, yeah. and instead it's me, Paul. But hey, you're uh, very welcome, uh, Regan. You know that. Yeah. I uh, cheers. It's good to be on. No, it was a great game on Sunday, Paul. When it was. It was great to hear uh, John and Chris on talking about the match, but I just wanted to um, pick, uh, pick up on something, Paul. Mm-hmm. And that was, I, I, I just thought overall, I thought Celtic could get, uh, once again, showed that that uh, Brendan Rodgers shows up in these big matches. And I think some things, Paul, I think, if you take it in isolation, Paul, um, I think um, that Celtic will be very, very happy with the point. You know, Brendan Rodgers is coming out there talking about six more uh, victories and they've got the title. And, I, and, that, and, and to me, that is the way I see it. Yeah. Uh, I listened to John and Chris talking about the split fixtures on Sunday and, and I've heard them talk about Celtic possibly going to Rugby Park. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, for me, Paul, looking at the fixtures, I think Celtic would have four matches at home and two away would probably be St Mirren and away at Rugby Park. So I think Celtic are in the best position they could possibly be in uh, to win this title. Yeah. OK, so there's the, the game this weekend, then the five after that, after the split. So, listen, we don't know yet. But Celtic probably should. I would imagine, you know, in here in the middle, listening to uh, both sides in the build-up or whatever, Rangers must be really disappointed not to take all three points because they were really on form. Celtic were getting better, but from, you know, the neutral position, it was a better result for Celtic. And I know yeah. they, there was a two-goal lead and all the rest of it, but can they continue it, Reagan? Because John Harrison said months ago... Celtic could go ahead and not lose to Rangers this season and still not win the league. You didn't say they wouldn't join. You said they could happen. And I thought, well, that rarely happens. But if you're a Rangers fan, you'd be thinking, well, can we beat Celtic? Because we might not need to beat Celtic. Is that right? The way it is. It's possible. Yeah, yeah, I, think the, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think the interesting thing for me, Paul, is that Celtic were getting beat, uh, drawn with a, a Motherwell team that, mm-hmm. uh, were, that weren't doing great this season. Uh, St. Johnson as well, just didn't do it. Never, never a few matches, but I think as well, Paul, you've seen the difference yeah. with Celtic when, when they had Vickers yeah. playing on Sunday, they had Rio playing on Sunday, and even the bench on Sunday was stronger. so much stronger. Yeah, yeah and uh, that's no disrespect to the guys like Burnley being old, but those, those guys are, no, are sure. no longer at Celtic now, and the, the bench is a lot stronger, so I'm I'm feeling very good in terms of six wins and Celtic are the champions of Scotland again. And um, I know people are saying it's not been good to watch this season, but I'm sure Brendan Rodgers' main objective for this season was to win the title. I mean, I've said on here many times, I've been on before, and I've spoken about that they need to spend more money in the transfer market, but surely to God they'll be spending money in the summer. You spoke there about yeah, okay. uh, possibly the bank balance being a... Uh, being a hundred million quid, Paul. 
I mean, if they don't spend when they're 100 million quid, they're never, probably never going to spend. Sure. And I'm not saying it'll be 100 million, but I was just doing a kind of uh, schoolboy maths there. Craig, can I throw that to you first of all? Some great points there. You've got the likes of um, on the bench, uh, Bernard, rather than, you know, Bernardo at different yeah. positions, the yeah, Bernabe yeah. and people like that. So Celtic are definitely stronger than they were. Carter yeah. Vickers, awesome. Huge, huge player uh, for Celtic. And there's no doubt he'd, he's been a miss for them. Uh, throughout the season so having him back and, and fit is obviously where Celtic want to be um, but, but I, Paul I, I think and I believe that Celtic will, will, will believe that they can go and win the remaining games uh, between now and the end of the season Rangers will be thinking exactly the same Let, let's not forget that this is two clubs that the expectation is to win every game of football Celtic supporters uh, and maybe you know I, I, within Celtic obviously the last old firm game being at Celtic Park would consider that to be an advantage to them. But seeing, seeing that result get blown wide open sure, as well. Yeah. I think they both could go all the way and then yeah. play each other. John, what do you feel? I think it's very close. I think um, Reagan makes a good case there for Celtic. I'm sure Craig will make a brilliant case for Rangers. Um, what both teams have to do, they have to go into every game knowing it's a cup final, knowing it's a, it's a must-win game. Um, the odds will be in favour of Celtic and Rangers winning every single game they've got left, other than the game at Celtic Park when they when they face each other. So Reagan, I think he makes some great points. Um, Celtic possibly the, the four games at home, two games away, um, but both teams have to be at it now. They can't afford to drop points, yeah. and it, it, you know it, it's whoever whoever makes that mistake, which it might go down to a goalkeeping save, might go down to a dodgy, you know, a refereeing decision. It, it, it might go down to anything, you know. But oh, don't you have, don't yeah. <laughs> but there's a race on, yeah. Regan. You know, and we wanted a race. Yeah. This is what we wanted at the start of the season. We wanted a race. Philip Clement as 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 um, you know, he's rectified the team, the the, the team that Michael Beale left him. He's had, he's had a big impact, you know, a big response from that side. Brendan has had to deal with not being able to bring any players in other than Idar on loan at the start, at, uh, sorry, in, in, yeah, in the January. window there yeah. in January. So listen, both teams have had their ups and downs, they've had their problems, but whoever holds their nerve, now, whoever can get the best out of their players is ultimately going to lift the title. Regan, did you want a race or would you have preferred that Celtic built on that seven or eight points lead and had gone on to seal it by now? I mean, you definitely want a race, Paul. Um, I think it's great. It's not great for the heart, Paul, but it's good for the <laughs> yeah. to yeah. be involved in yeah. and uh, to wind people up. Um, the one thing I do want to mention, Paul, because I was listening to this program and the the week Paul Durham, and I thought John Beaton had a very a very good match as well. I thought he dealt with the uh, call that he made, and I thought he was spawned with that. Good. And I think, in terms of you're talking about there, Paul. In terms of they want a race, I think it's great for the overall oh, yeah. Scottish football. Sure. I don't know if you, I don't know if you heard earlier, but I think it was a record viewing figure for a match. Yeah, that's what uh, I started with, one point four four million. Uh, so that's the biggest ever for the old firm, the Glasgow Derby. Yeah, one point four four million. Uh, so, so, and that was just on goal. So, no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, All right. Uh, so I think it's overall. I think it's a great thing for yeah. Scottish football that the two, the two are going to it's all. Uh, with, uh, with six games to go because it brings more interest Paul and that's, what, that's what you want it is everyone's talking about it here's the two managers speaking about the goal which came in what 21-22 seconds first of all Brendan Rodgers it, it was a symbol of our intent right from the off you know we got a, we got a goal from our pressing and, and Dizan is there giving the, the full back no time and he presses it and obviously it's, uh, it goes in but, but you'll always take that so um, so yeah so you get one nil up in the game then of course then uh, that can always give you confidence away from home Contrasting reaction from the manager in the home dugout I'm luckily a positive person but I had in the past some, some managers who had sometimes nightmares before a game about bad scenarios I don't think you can have a nightmare like that to be after 22 seconds behind in an old firm in that way so that's the biggest blow you can get oh and, and my team had needed some time to recover from that of course as a as an opponent when you come in an away game and you can start like that you get a boost that's also natural and that's what happened Regan thanks for the call the Go Radio Football Show
Love Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. Let's go back onto the lines. Justin is on, a big Rangers fan. Good evening, Justin. Good evening, Paul. Good evening, Craig. Good evening, John. How are you? I'm good, thank you, good, Justin. Justin. Yes, yes. How, you, have you, uh, how are you feeling after Sunday evening? Uh, frustrated, if I'm entirely honest. Like I'm sure most Rangers fans, to, to a degree, uh, first half was awful. But one of the things I was keen to kind of talk about, I heard Barry talking about it yesterday mm -hmm. with, with you, Paul, was about Fabio Silva. Yeah. Um, now, I, I, I don't know what Craig thinks, and I'd be keen to hear what John thinks about it as well. When you're, when you're watching him rolling about mm -hmm. as if he's been shot by a sniper from the main stand, yeah. and then bouncing back up, I, I can understand, and this is a, a hard thing for me to say, I can understand why Celtic fans are, are going to penalty and why it caused the bye to it. It was a penalty, but. I can see why it's caused the bite because for five, four or five times before that, he was rolling about as if he was in mortal agony after one or two tackles. And you could see some of the Rangers players, I think it was uh, Lawrence at one point, picked him up and told him to get up. Um, it, was, it was embarrassing. That's not what you want to any Rangers player or all firm player. That wouldn't have happened in any of your guys' day, uh, for what I remember. Um, and I just want to make sure that that's mm -hmm. cut out. I think Tom Camo's got to tober him right in the line for that. Tober. Good yeah, word, Craig. And, 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 you're, and you're spot on. I said earlier on in the show, whether it's your teammate or an opponent, I, I actually hate that part of the game. Um, and uh, Silva is, is young, um, but he, he, he needs to learn and needs to learn quickly that that up here, even uh, you know, by your own supporters, won't be accepted. Uh, it won't be tolerated. It's the quickest way to get fans on your on your case. Um, so hopefully, that is a situation that he can learn from. For me, again, I'm a little bit old school, but not a dinosaur. If you if you're injured, you stay down. If you're not, get up and get on with the game. And I think that's what we all want to see for sure. Do you think uh, the manager will say to him, "Cut that out"? Yes. Yeah. I, I, yes, and, and he would be would, bang, bang on to, yeah. to, to do that. And hopefully, mm -hmm. you, you touched there, Justin, on, on Lawrence, more players, you know. That, listen, mate, that's not something that uh, is, is uh, tolerated up here. Go and compete, right, and go yeah. and show people how good you are by staying on your feet and scoring goals and assisting and, and doing all the positive things. John? It was a hard watch. Yeah, it, it was. Really, it was hard to, to look at him and think, well, he's embarrassed himself yeah. because... All right, you can understand that there's a bit of an impact there. You know, they, they've run into each other. But the, the way he's gone over and then he's punching the floor and then holding his face, trying to get the opponent player sent off, that wouldn't work now because it'll go to VAR and obviously people will see that he was nowhere near a sending off. But, listen, you, you don't want to see that. Uh, you know, um, you really, really don't. And Greg, like myself... It's just, um, it's unacceptable. It really, really is. It was like, you know, it, it was just like watching the little girl yeah. doing ro roly polies in a field. It was just like he embarrassed himself. Yeah. He, he let himself down. Never mind the players and the crowd and the manager. He let himself down. So I hope he has a look at that and looks himself in the mirror and says, I'm a disgrace there. I, I know what I was trying to do. Yeah. I was trying to get the players sent off for Celtic. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and he, he comes back and he apologises and then we don't see that again. See, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter actually how good a player you are. If, if your antics are like that, then it's the quickest way to get people uh, that will turn, turn against you. Obviously, you know, officials in terms of refereeing games yeah. and all that sort of stuff. I remember um, Nuno Capucho, who was a wonderful oh, player. Yeah. Right yeah. now, Nuno not necessarily rolled about like that, but again was probably a little bit um, soft in regards to you know he, he would go to ground easy and get that free kick and all that. And these were kind of things that my earlier experiences in Europe, mm. I, I, I got that wound up, John, because yeah. I'm going for challenges where I knew that there would be I, you hadn't laid a glove on him. There was yeah. no contact. Do you know what and they were well? rolling about? Yeah, it's so frustrating. Yeah, do you know what as well, Justin? If you're if you if if you're playing in Argentina or Spain, or Brazil, or Italy, 
you're getting a pat on the back from the manager for, for that, acting like that. If you're winning a penalty or you're going over and you win a free kick, they, they are advised to do that. Mm. The kids in these countries are taught how to dive. Mm. You know, and it's, it's accepted in certain countries. But not in our game. But not, sure. not, not in our game. You know, we like to think it's, it's fair challenges and the right calls of people getting booked and sent off. So as I said, he embarrassed himself. But what I would say, in other countries, you know, people would be clapping him for, yeah. for diving and that. But in but this not country, here. he's not accepted. Yeah. Justin, what are you thinking for tomorrow night then? If you were the manager, what changes would you make to the starting lineup? One, because you've played in such a tumultuous game just 48 hours ago. And also, tactically, what would you do? I think that, and that's, I said this the other day, I think that's the first time um, in the old firm game that, uh, the Gaffers got his selection wrong. Yeah. I, I, I thought he should have started with um, Cantwell, and I, I wasn't sure why Wright was playing ahead of either Matondo or Seema. Or, or Seema. Um, if Seema's fit, play him. You know, don't wait and play him halfway through or bring him on as a sub. Play him for the start, and if you need to bring him off, bring him off. So I, I think from now on, like what John said and what Craig said, I think you've got to be playing your best 11 yeah. week in, week out, mm-hmm. rotating without injuries and stuff like that. You know, I don't see the point in. Play your best 11, your strongest 11, week in, week out, unless you get an injury and you need to rotate it that way. But I, I think Seaman and Cantwell have got to be 100% starters um, yep. for the rest of the season. Craig? Yeah, no, I, I thought that the... I definitely thought that Campbell would start. Um, Seema, obviously, uh, in his 15 goals before, um, coming back now and obviously getting a, a goal at the weekend again. Big, big player for, for Rangers. Um, so great to, to see him fit. Can they um, sign him, do you think, in the summer, turn it into something permanent? Maybe another year's loan? Yeah, but mm. I, would, I would think that would be a better option because otherwise I think you're talking again, what, six, seven million. Mm. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money up, up, for up here. Yeah. If you're um, in the Champions League, maybe Champions worth it. League's different. Yeah. But you would, and Cantwell, how did he do for you? I think most people thought he would start. You heard Justin yeah. saying it, Barry thought that. I think you did too. Yeah, look, I thought, look, Cantwell come on, there was, a, there was a real hunger and desire to try and um, make an impact on the game. Um, so, you know, you've got to praise him for that. And he does give Rangers something different. Mm. Uh, and I also was slightly surprised that, that he didn't um, get the start in this particular match. At the same time, Paul and Justin, uh, I, look, I was surprised that Callum McGregor didn't start for Celtic. But you could see he wasn't fully fit, was he? I mean, not match fit, would that be fair? What but, did you think, Craig? No, but again, it's one of those ones where that particular game, you go, well, if they can come on and play 20, 30 minutes, mm. then for me, why, you can play from the start. It's just how how the managers decide yeah. to, mm-hmm. to go about it. Brendan went the other way, and it worked. Uh, and it worked, it? Yeah. yeah. And and again, you've got Rangers supporters uh, in regards to the starting eleven with Philip mm-hmm. Clement saying, and I've heard a few of them now that say that it's maybe the the first time where he's got a starting lineup yeah. wrong. Um, but again, they were in a, in a position where mm-hmm. fortunately they were able to reel that back and finish in the strongest possible way. John, you were surprised that uh, they made those changes. You thought it would probably be, I think Cantwell would have been in. Um, Seema maybe just wasn't quite fit enough. Tomorrow night, what do you think is going to happen? John, you expect what's going to happen, Rangers at Dundee? Yeah, if the, go, if the game goes ahead, which I, I hope it is, because yep. as you say, it's been, it's been um, cancelled four yep. times, and I just think they've, yeah, well, they, they've been, lost four games. Yeah, they, not this yeah, one, but they well, have. Rangers yeah. certainly want to get the game because they got, they got another game on Sunday at yep. Ross County. They want to get this game out of the way, preferably they want to win so they can. They can prepare for the weekend you know they don't want any more setbacks and and have to throw in another date they want the games to come thick and fast obviously because as I said it, it, it dampens all the you know it takes the preparation side of things out the way Celtic obviously at home to uh, St Mirren at the weekend Would you expect Rangers to win? Tomorrow? I would expect them to win at, at yeah, I, th- yeah. I, th- I think yeah. it's uh, I think they're too, they're too good they're too strong mm-hmm. they know what's at stake and, and for me yes if the game gets played I can see Rangers winning there. Here's the manager's thoughts. So come back to you in a second, Justin and Drew Craig, um, about the Dundee threat. They're in the battle for this top six place, what's a huge thing. Um, they're going full in attack, creating a lot of chances, scoring a lot of goals. They have a manager also with a lot of fire inside of him. Um, so it's a, it's a big test to play against them. It's a good team. Yeah, and they'll be hurting two up at the weekend, as you know. Uh, but they ended up losing 3-2. 
Justin, what's your scoreline? What do you think is going to happen? I think uh, tomorrow, 3-0. 3-0 Rangers. I think it's going to be... Uh, I think you're going to see some high-scoring games for both yeah. uh, Rangers and Celtic between now and the end of the season. Because I think the, the impetus now is, is to you know go full, for, full tilt. But... Um, I definitely think, I don't think, this might be controversial, but I don't think it's going to come down to the old firm game. I've got a, a, a very sneaking suspicion that hopefully it's not Rangers, but I think one of them will slip up in one of the other games out with the old firm. I think it will be done by the old firm. I, I think one of them will slap up before then. Yeah, no, like again, it's something yeah, that both John I and I so you think have discussed. Two more twists and turns, just mm. a little yeah. bit like I think. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, and I'm kind of of the same uh, thought process. Uh, you know, I think that when you asked me early, earlier, Paul, can mm. Rangers win without beating Celtic? Mm. I believe it is possible. Um, you know, that I think that there are more twists and turns in the remaining matches outside because, outside of okay, the Rangers because Celtic because you're playing the other top five sides. Yeah. You know, they but they should be able to beat them, John. They should. They yeah. should, especially at this stage did, of the season. Did they not take a lot from the trade. weekend? At Celtic must think now we can take on anyone. And Rangers must also think second half performance, we can take on anyone. Justin, great call. Thanks for that. Paul's on, a big Rangers fan. Hi, Paul. Oh, hi, Paul. Hi, John. Hi, Paul. Uh, hi, Paul. Yeah. Hi, Paul. So, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Um, I was at the game on um, Sunday. I think we uh, yeah. no, I kind of took it as a fact. Uh, we're two 0 down at half time. You know, you've got to take some out of the game. I think we were really, really poor. Um, to, to, it's for forty five minutes. I haven't seen us as poor as that for for a long time, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And and to be honest, I think it was maybe the the, the freak goal um, that caused it as well. Do you know? I think it was just the, the wind didn't help either, and I just think we kind of didn't recover from that. Um, were you in your seat? Did you see uh, it? I mean, I've been asking everybody because oh, it was just phenomenal, yeah. wasn't it? In that, I was yeah. Of, yeah. What happened? Then it was going to be offside, I think. Um, but no, I think I think as the game went on, I think um, to come out there with three three, I had a tinge of disappointment. I thought, no, that, that could have been a statement victory. Mm. I phoned in your show before, Paul, and I had said Clement's acid test will be in the big games. If you remember me calling in a yes. at the time, it was Aberdeen in the cup final, and Celtic Park would be having an acid test, and yep. and, and he hasn't came out with against Celtic yet. The last two games now. Um, you know, do I still believe in Clermont? I, I do. Um, but if anything's going to be an acid test now, it's going to Parkhead. If, mm-hmm. No, it's, it's in... I, I'll be honest with you, I, I came on your show as well and I, I, I said, look, I put my hands up with, with Tavernier. I gave him a bit of a hard time, I suppose. A couple of fans yeah. did as well, but I think this is the acid test for the likes of Golds and, and Tavernier because see if we don't win the league this year from where we've been, the doubters are going to come out and I'm going to be willing to say, look, is the old guard just no mm. good enough they've no got the mentality to do this? I don't want Craig's thoughts and, and yeah. John's thoughts on that right. the next players, but that's what I think is a fan. Let's ask them. Yeah, Craig, yeah. what about, what about uh, Goldson and Tavernier, who've been amazing for Rangers? Are there yeah. signs now that this is maybe the last uh, few months of that partnership? Look, for me, um, Tavernier was a, a, you know, part of uh, a problem for the first goal, no mm. doubt about that, and, and Maeda always gives him yeah. a really, really tough match. Yeah. But Tavani has had a fantastic season. He's had an amazing season. I mean, a week ago we were talking about him breaking the goal-scoring mm-hmm. record for any defender in the UK at 131 goals. Mm-hmm. Um, he, his performances this season have been very good. Uh, I think he's led the team well. A team that's you know was chasing uh, a Celtic team that was seven, eight points uh, ahead at the time. Uh, Connor Goldson... Uh, look, again, I think he probably has struggled a little bit this season. Has he got uh, an injury? Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. No. I don't know, Paul. But um, you know, maybe people are saying has he has he lost a yard of pace? Um, you know. So, but again, he's one of those ones that regularly plays week in week out. But he's been involved in some situations, you know, with penalties. He's kind of rode his luck a couple of times this season with penalties that weren't given or a penalty yeah. that wasn't given. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> look, he, he's had for a period of time uh, different partners to a certain degree. Goldson could still come out obviously with Rangers winning a title it's not been his best season yeah and and I think um, if it wasn't Tavernier if his name wasn't James Tavernier at the weekend he's going off because Maeda absolutely had him in his pocket but yeah. I agree with Paul there was a couple of freak goals in the game Maeda's and Seema's yeah. um, yeah. So, for me, I thought Celtic were excellent in the first half, Paul, but I, I've said it all along. I said it at the weekend. 
Rangers. I don't know what uh, Philippe Clement said to them half time, but it certainly worked. They looked like they got on the front foot from the word go. You know, they got pulled two goals back, however way they came. And then obviously when Idar goes through and scores, I'm thinking that's it. You know, I'm not sure whether yeah. Rangers have it in them now again to, to get one back and obviously get the equaliser. But they did, and that takes spirit, it takes character, it takes not giving up all these things that you need to do to win things and to get results. And I thought Matondo's goal was, oh, it's, yeah. it's up there with goal of the season. He cuts inside and he, he bends it into that far left-hand corner and uh, Joe Hart had no chance. And I generally think, Paul, that it was probably the right result mm. considering how mm. the game sort of went. I think both teams were good at times and then obviously they showed their frailties at times. Okay. Paul, as a huge Rangers fan, do you not think that you... Well, do you feel confident that Rangers will win all the other games? And let, let's take the Celtic game separately. But do you not think they're going to win uh, all the games? Nobody knows for sure, but what do you feel? Oh, no, I, I feel confident. I feel... Yeah. No, I, I, I don't mind actually being underdog in that, if that makes sense, from okay, a funny yeah, way. Yeah, but sure. like, I think playing away from home maybe takes the pressure off. I don't want John and Craig thinking, maybe yourself, Paul, as well, but... We've played now Celtic twice at Ibrox with, with all our own fans, and I think that's actually been detrimental to us <laughs> if I, if, in a funny way yeah, because yeah. I think there's no. See, if the Celtic fans were in there, if it was like kind of back to normal, mm-hmm. it might have been a bit of a different atmosphere. It was, it's weird because being there as a fan, yep. but, uh, no, the, the, the way. No, I, I, no, I can come out and moan at my, my players and whatnot, but it felt like the whole stadium was doing that, and, and that that's maybe no great for confidence wise for players I don't, I don't know you guys think but well, Craig you were there as well what, that, what was it like when it went 2-0 like I said even for myself personally it was disbelief it was like oh, oh my god mm-hmm. um, and, and you, you touch on uh, those two games Paul I mean there were you know no, no Celtic supporters unfortunately for me because of spectacle they should be but but yeah. they, they weren't in there um, and, and both games Celtic have, have gone ahead in those games so it's, it's it, it has it's been a really really weird Kind of kind of situation um, in terms of uh, you know that that advantage so to speak that you kind of would think it could be. You might be right. It might have worked uh, against Rangers in the last couple of matches. Mm. Well, it's going to change now anyway, isn't it? You know, I think they've they've, they've both clubs yeah. have come together. There's going to be a way fancy. Yeah, two and a half yeah, thousand at Ibrox. Hey, listen, if it's, awesome. if, it, yeah. if it's been a problem for Rangers, it, it certainly yeah. hasn't been for Celtic. Because Celtic had gone to Ibrox uh, and, and performed really, yep. really well. And at, at the home game at Celtic Park, Celtic managed to win that mm-hmm. game as well. So it can maybe add its pressures because you're playing in front of all your own fans and you're not hearing anything from the away fans. But when you are up against a cauldron of, of a, an atmosphere, yeah. then you've really got to show some stomach for a, for a battle and you've really yeah. got to go and play really well in that atmosphere where you've got no fans so, you know, it's, yep. it's, it's whatever people think it about just it. Really. You. That first goal is yeah. so important. It's crucial. Yeah. Like I said, and if, you, if it's the away yeah. team, Paul, it can, it can be the silencer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and thankfully for Rangers, uh, the, the, the crowd stuck with the team uh, and, and eventually they got back, back in. But really, really important. Those two games um, against Celtic so far at, at Ibrox, Rangers haven't managed to score the first goal and therefore that atmosphere really to be able to come to life. Paul, thanks for your call. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call 0141 374 0409. What a week it's been. Calls have been coming in. A plenty. We're racing towards the end of the show. No eight minutes injury time here. The games are getting longer and longer in England as well, isn't it? Ridiculous. It's commonplace now, 100 minutes. It's, yes, but, not, it's yeah. kind of normal practice. Uh, sure. It'd be interesting yep. to see when they do a study, Paul, because yep. I think those extra minutes over time will, will mean extra injuries. Indeed. I think that's you're probably right. It's certainly late, late goals, isn't it? It's a, I, I think maybe Chelsea and Man United last week, I think people were thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the weekend maybe. Yeah. When you hear eight minutes to go, you think, wow. If you're ahead, you're like, whoa. And if you're still in the game, then... Plenty to play for. Right, the inspections tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, Dundee against Rangers. Can I just touch on some of the other uh, stories for the weekend? What are you thinking, Craig? Motherwell against Hibs. Huge game Saturday at uh, Fir Park. Hibs, a narrow chance of getting top six. The same for Motherwell. What do you reckon? Well, look, Motherwell, um, 
ridiculous comeback. Mm. 2 0 down to come over the top of Dundee to win 3 2. A home game against Hibs, which they have to win to have a chance to, to make the top six. And I tell you what, I fancy him to do it. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if once again we see Theo Bear on the score sheet. I'm going for a Motherwell victory against Hibbs. He's been phenomenal, hasn't he? Couldn't score last season at St. Johnson, but he's on fire this year. So they would go on to 39 points. We have to wait to see what happens with Dundee because they're on 39, but we know they've got Rangers tomorrow and they've got Aberdeen on Saturday. So if they were to lose those games, then that would be brilliant for Motherwell. John, what do you think? The well against the High Beasts? The well against the high bees. Yeah, what do you reckon? As Whoa. we see the pictures in Sky of uh, the referee there just looking, just bouncing the ball, trying to bounce. It's not bouncing, is it? A dense part. Like one and a half times the bounce. Is the game... Um, yeah. So this Saturday, Motherwell against Hibs. Where's the game? The, Motherwell? The, at Motherwell, yep. Motherwell will tell you yep. what, if Motherwell being at home, Hibs will take a massive crowd right, there. Yeah. Um, I, I tell you what... Fancy the home side. Fancy with the well. Wow, that I would think, be. I think I, I mean, do, Paul. Yep, yeah, they're on a run. There's no question. So, what about Aberdeen Dundee, Craig? So Dundee still in it. Some game, isn't it? If they win, if they take points, they're top six. Aberdeen been dismal, dismal. Yeah. Sorry, mm. this season. Mm. I think that Dundee can actually go up there um, and get a result, Paul. You reckon? Yeah. Aberdeen, Aberdeen can't make top six. No, no, because John, that, the Majowski goal that was chalked off, it yeah. was given then chalked off. They could only get the 37 and, and, and Dundee are on... Are, are on yeah, um, 39. Yeah. 34, sorry, Aberdeen, yeah, they yeah. can get the 37, sure. but Dundee, so they, they can't get out of the bottom no. six. It's been a poor season for sure. Aberdeen, although Majowski has been outstanding yeah. for them. Mm. So that's the surprise. They've got a centre forward that's got 20 odd goals well, and they, yeah. haven't, they haven't sort of... They've let Second too many top. goals in, yeah. if you like. Um, but... Aberdeen Dundee, I think Aberdeen will win the game um, because I think they've, they've got to start winning at home to, to appease their supporters. For sure. The other game's Hearts against Livy and St. Johnson against Kilmarnock. What a season for Kilmarnock, John. They've been the scourge of Celtic. They've damaged Rangers. They've beaten Rangers as well. And uh, they are in 48 points and they want to stay there and get that European spot automatically. Yeah, and they've, they've looked like a top six side, yeah. Paul, haven't they? Yeah. Some of the results and some of the way that they play um, watching them play Kilmarnock under Derek McInnes. We give him a mention every week, don't we? Yeah. And, and Chris Burke and actually desert. said there the other day, his actual words, Paul, I took from working with Chris Burke was, we're fortunate to have him. Yeah. The players think, and, and the club mm. think, they're very lucky to have a manager like Derek McInnes. Yeah. You know, so the job that he's doing is uh, fantastic. Remember, he was in there as well. He brought them back up mm. from the championship. Um so yeah, they're, they're sitting in fourth. They can't get okay. to heart two or in third. But he's doing a, he's doing a fantastic job, is Derek McInnes. Are they going to win, do you reckon, at St. Johnson at the weekend? Going for a, a, a killy win? I'll go for yeah. a draw. Going for a draw. Craig, what do you reckon? Uh, I'm with John. I think it's I think it's going to be a draw. I think it's, uh, you know, for St. Johnson, very, very important to keep away from that, that playoff position. So, uh, and I think that they will hold on to a, a point here, a draw. Let's hope the game goes ahead tomorrow for Dundee against Rangers. Lots of uh, people on the socials. Here is Gregory, a big Celtic fan, saying Rangers really haven't experienced consistent pressure this season. You know, late in the season, it's beginning to tell, he says. The Motherwell result, Benfica, Celtic, Celtic again with the experience. He thinks the Celtic win will win the remaining six games and win the double. I think he also thinks Rangers, though, will take it all the way. It's funny this season that people think, mm, no, it's... Uh, you know, they'll both slip up on the way to the game at Celtic Park. We don't know when it's going to be, but we will find out soon because the uh, the final five fixtures will be determined later this week, just after the game tomorrow, I would imagine, or just after that the following day on Thursday. Lots of talks today about the game. Uh, it's been the dominant uh, chat today about the Dundee pitch. I don't know. It's a, It's a crazy situation to go in a top league that you don't know the day before and we're going to travel now. You don't know yet if the game is on tomorrow or not. So that's a really weird situation. OK, it can happen in extreme circumstances. <laughs> and I don't think last few years in all the top leagues it ever happened. But now when it's raining in Scotland, there's every time a problem. There's been a problem there for sure. Here's Kieran Dell speaking about the pitch. Uh, I've seen, I've seen a couple, couple of pitches. Yeah, um, obviously the game we played back in November was was postponed a touch as well. Um, so um, 
so yeah, but it's like I say, it's it's uh, both same for both teams. You just got to uh, sort of adapt to it, and we're all good players. We, uh, we play, like you say, we played on all different kinds of pitches, and just got to accept it. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen then tomorrow night if the game goes ahead, which we hope it will? We'll tell you here and go just after eleven tomorrow. Craig Moore, what do you reckon? What do you feel? One, I, th- one, I think the game will definitely go ahead, yep. um, and and I just think that you know Rangers will be strong enough to go and uh, win this particular match, but they need to play in the areas where mistakes can't be crucial. Play in the opponent's half and and handle the conditions better than what they. Uh, did in the first half against Celtic at Ibrox. What do you think about the Butland save? To remarkable, on? Yeah. remarkable save. Yeah. Um, from the yeah. header, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. from O'Reilly's header. I tell you what, is he's gone to his left. He's got a he's got a great hand to it, uh, and what looked a, a certain goal for for Celtic. Um, huge, huge save. Looked a little bit nervous with balls. Play it's back it's to him from central sure. defenders. Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, just be smart, Paul, and, and, and no mistakes. You know, but you don't want to encourage your, your opponent, but in terms of that save, enormous save. Oh, world yeah. class save. It really, really was. And it was to go, I think he was 2 up. And mm-hmm. then, and yeah. then obviously, um, sure. and then Matt O'Reilly would have tucked the penalty where he went. Again, so as Craig said earlier on, if it goes three, it's an awful long way back mm-hmm. for Rangers. So, I've said it many times on you, Paul, successful teams over the years for Rangers and Selig have always had great goalkeepers. And the amount of saves he's made this season, hence where Rangers are mm-hmm. in the league. Um, and that was another one to save. It really, really was in terms of what happens if he doesn't make that incredible mm-hmm. save, you know. Uh, so, yeah, goal, goalkeepers make brilliant saves at crucial times. And your keeper as well, the former... Uh, well, the former England keeper. What, what about Big Joe Hart? Gareth Southgate must have been impressed. Yeah, well, when he yeah. came out as well, I can't yeah. think who it was. Was it Dessas when he had the chance and Joe Hart came out, made himself Smothered big, yeah. made himself yeah. really big, and that was another excellent save at a really crucial time for Celtic as well. Yeah, and sure. too, the double save, wasn't it? For, yeah. uh, right at the yeah. end of the first half. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they were huge saves. So both goalkeepers we touched on leading in. <laughs> Both able to make top saves, and they did again at the weekend. Scoreline tomorrow night, John, what do you reckon? Dundee Rangers? Um, I don't think it'll be a stroll in the park, especially on a... On a that park. If, <laughs> if, if the... Yeah, yeah Dens Park, yeah. yeah. If, if, the, um, if the conditions yeah. are really, really bad, I don't think it'll be a stroll in the park. I think Dundee might you know, show a bit of urgency early on. Uh, but I think Rangers will be too strong and they'll come away with the three points, Paul. And the Celtic game will be on Saturday. Get your predictions in a second. But I know, John and Craig, you'll want to know that the Radiotherapy podcast, which was launched here on Thursday by the team here at Go Radio with the young people from the Teenage Cancer Trust, from Julie, the nurse, and Molly, and all the team. Uh, do you know, it's just going round the world and back. It's phenomenal. Um, it reached number one on the Apple UK Medical Podcast. And then it's entering the Spotify Top 10. Coverage of the podcast was in Canada, India, Brazil, French Reunion, Nepal, all around the world. It's phenomenal. Australia as well. Um, it, Wales. I just yeah. threw that in, John, for you. Yeah. Um, but 2.4 million people have viewed it in the last number of days. That's going up, and it's wonderful. Unbelievable. They, they and, all of and that's yeah. what it's all about, Paul, Isn't raising yeah. awareness you know, for radiotherapy. Yeah. Um, we know about and, chemotherapy, but yeah, also and, uh, when people go into hospital, they require right. radiotherapy yeah. as well. And that's what they're calling it. It's quite a clever use of that. But the teenagers, it was uh, eight girls who were in the other night, Craig. Um, Brilliant. Really and, and going global. And it? going global. Exactly. You know? yeah. So that, that awareness, very, so, very key. And globally, people will be watching to see what happens. It's going to be some run in now. What about Celtic St. Mirren? The weekend because uh, uh, we're not going to see you until then. No, Celtic, yeah. um, Celtic will be too strong yeah. at home. Um, I imagine a fairly comfortable victory for Celtic over Samirun. Scoreline two or three nil. Two or three nil. John, I agree, you with I, huh? I agree with Craig. I agree with yeah. I agree with the scoreline. I agree with every word he <laughs> says. <laughs> we're uniting the city and uh, the the country on that. Guys, thanks very much. Great Pleasure to hear you. Cheers, Paul. See you. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow night, Barry will be here with Peter Grant, so that should be good tomorrow evening as well. And then Friday, uh, Thursday, Andy Walker with Stephen McGinn. Thanks to everyone who called tonight. We'll be here tomorrow at five. The news is next, and then Joe Cole Day. Thank you so much for making the switch to the Go Radio Football Show. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market. Let's go! 
When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409.